All right, folks, welcome. This is Nosman here, and I'm bringing you the replays of the October 1st, 2020 tournament. It was a free tournament on Cockatrice with some prizes. And first of all, I want to thank all the staff and organization, the judges, for their effort. It was a, an amazing tournament, an awesome experience for all the people who want to play or try Legacy because Cockatrice is a free platform, so anybody had access to the tournament and all the legacy pool. So kudos to everybody, thank you again. And now, a couple of disclaimers. First of all, as you can hear, probably my English is not perfect. It's not my first language, I'll try my best, but sorry in advance for any problem with the, the language. Um, second, uh, Cockatrice replace is a little bit uh, limited. Let's say it does not allow to show library interaction like cantrips or stuff like that. So you, we are only going to see both player ends and the board state and sometimes uh, the graveyard if needed. Uh, okay, now uh, let's talk about my list a little bit. I was playing this shell. This was uh, a Thought Lush uh, Oracle combo. It, this is uh, my personal list. It's my personal interaction of the deck. Um, the main board is described in the primer, which I wrote, I will link it in the description. At the end of it, you can find the Discord if you want to join and know more about this shell. But I want to uh, give some talks about the sideboard. So I expected a higher number of fast combo decks since it was a long tournament. And, you know, people do want to play uh, quick stuff, so the game lasts less. Uh, hence, I decided to play an extra Thermos script for graveyard interaction, you know, against Hogak, Reanimator, um, Upsol spell, so the stuff they try to play around the graveyard, and also Surgical Extraction for the decks that want to try to get you on turn zero. We have Fluster Sound for spell-based combo decks, and also for protection if we need to. We have Carpet of Flowers, which is essentially a replacement for Lotus Petal against um, uh, heavy blue decks. Overall, just a great card uh, against that. Uh, I I would not uh, play this deck with, without those. Uh, Veil of Summer for protection and discard interaction or counter spell interaction. With two have Shatter Effect, Cross and Grip uh, for the counter balance and you know decks that plays enchantment and counters. And Reclamation Sage which is just a beater over, a, uh, let's, let's say, uh, it, it's a shutter effect uh, on, on a body, to one body, if I don't go wrong. Uh, then we have Pity Needle, which is the last addiction, addition. So basically, I had some trouble in testing with some heavy Richard and Port locks, Vial decks, some kind of Vial decks, and Merit Lages. So this card is uh, a solution for all these problems. Another solution for my ledge is Brazil and Borrower, which does bounce it and blocks it also. And overall, it's just a flexible answer to permanent uh, in general, to any permanent in general. Now, this deck does not suffer any specific um, lock piece, but you know some permanent and noisy like Blood Moon or stuff like that, Spyglass in case, or Pity Needle, so you're gonna want those in the sideboard, and also present um, blocking potential for flyers, so they, they, they seem pretty great, right? Okay, now, let's move on into Cockatrice, and start looking for replays. Okay, let's start with game one, we have the fast forward option, so you're gonna go fast. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the opponent moved, if I don't recall wrong. Yeah. Um, so, as you can see, we are playing against BR Animator. We kept a solid uh, 7 card hand with a lot of cantrips and uh, 2 win condition, which are TO. Uh, this hand is a bit soft to challenge on 1 on turn 1, but we can also use Tassa to dig for interaction if we need to. So, the combo itself get, does not get stopped by the chalice. But instead of Chalice, we get uh, a BR Animator, which will basically proceed to turn one Thought Size himself, get Grizzle Brand down, and reanimate it. Draw seven with one mana uh, Black Floating. Dark Ritual again, and unmask himself for Seraph Insanity and reanimate it. So I just conceded here. 
Um, so that, that was a fast, fast game one. Uh, he didn't get to see my deck, so that was sort of advantage. And now let's watch game two, in which we have the sideboard live now. Okay, we keep the fast forward option. Okay, this is our first end. I don't know why we, why he kept the chancellor, chancellor on game two, which is not that great. So we, our piece of interaction was only the spell pierce, despite having a, a turn three combo with off paradigm shift specifically. So I didn't really like this because uh, it, it's not enough against the leader, so I moved that. All right, uh, this end is better. He has force of will, he has country for further interaction. So th this is a solid keep. We can just put a land on the bottom. Uh, if I don't recall wrong, he moved to three cards. Yeah, uh, just kept the land looting and Grizzlebrand. We start with Ponder. We do not get to see what we are playing, but we're gonna draw a Veil of Summer and keep it open off a Lotus Petal. They're gonna crack a fetch and loot, faceless looting. We're okay with that. We just draw, put Tropical down and pass with a triple interaction Veil of Summer for this card, Surgical Extraction Force plus Peach. Now it tries to unmask us and I play Veil of Summer getting a uh, a 3 for 1, basically, because we also get to draw a card of this, which is a groove. Now, uh, drawing another Thassa Oracle, I decided to play one of those because I wanted to put the clock on, since you're gonna get some life off so they cannot draw 14 cards of Grizzlebrand and just apply pleasure in general. And we also can trip off this, so it's pretty good. Our opponent tries to thaw sees us and I decided to respond with Surgical on Grizzlebrand, which is this, which let's say was the most problematic threat in their suite. Now uh, it shows a library, it shows the Chancellor in the hand. I remand and discard the Force of Will. I attack Cycle, Waterlock Group, pass. He draws and pass. I cycle again. I play Brainstorm. Uh, now uh, we cast a Brainstorm and we're gonna put two lands, two, uh, two cards on top, sorry, and have the Shaldock Island uh, hide the Tassa Oracle itself. That's just, this is a common trick. You're gonna Brainstorm, then put a win condition on top and a useless card, so Shaldock Island shuffle those away, if I don't recall wrong. Yeah, indeed. We place the Tassa Oracle under it and beat. Now he tries to Dark Ritual for exhuming, I guess. I brainstorm in response and do not find any interaction, so I let the, them resume. Exhum, sorry. We are fetching here in our turn and casting for 5 mana the Thought Flash. And this is basically game since he cannot beat us without flash down, and we have the win condition under Shell the Kyle. So we pass the turn, he beats down, I take five. I'm gladly take five, it's okay. Exile the first card. Uh, always remember to pay Thought Flash upkeep uh, trigger. And we're just gonna cast, uh, you know, exile the first 20 cards, uh, say um, the library until we have 20 cards. In order to activate Shadow Hell and do not exile the whole library, or if your win condition gets countered or anything happens, you're gonna lose the turn later. The following tool, let's say, and we win here, revealing Thassa Oracle. So, Shadow Kalan activation of a Thought Lush. Now, let's go to game three. One, two, three. We have Mulligan here from them. Let's go fast forward a bit. We mold two. Okay, uh, we kept a good end. 
because basically I force plus pitch, flush storm up, uh, brainstorming case, and uh, Tormos crypt, crypt up for anything, so it's a pretty good hand. Maybe I should have kept the land over the Lotus Pedal, now that I think about it, but either way. I got storm one faceless looting, discard Razor Brand, and what? Uh, a Dark Ritual? Yeah. Uh, we play Waterlock, Groove, Petal, Tormod, and Pass. Now let's go a little bit back and forth, if I don't recall wrong. We drew a double parallel shift, which is our enabler, so we're gonna play around parallel shift. Now, one thing about Graveyard Date, as you can see, despite everything that we're gonna play for Sophil Frustazone, we have Tormod script up to tax them, so they have to play, they have to respect this, they have to play around that, but we can use it in our turn to get a parallel shift for zero and win of four mana. Paradigm Shift plus Thassa Oracle. So it goes a little bit back and forth. He tries to reanimate. Uh, I flushed some there. I brainstorm. Uh, didn't find any, uh, let's say, win condition. So I fetch. Uh, I, uh, to get rid of the cards. Try to find something with a Shell Dock Isle. And place Ponder under it. So if you don't find a win condition with Shadow Kyle, you're gonna play a cantrip for your pile. If you partner shift for too much, you're gonna draw of it. It's either way a plus one in any case, or an interaction spell like Force of Will of Sam or Spell Pierce. Again, pass back and forth. We have another counter. So this game is basically over yet because as you can see, we have uh, anything. To interact with them. Now, there was a judge call here because I misclicked and I drew two cards of the uh, upkeep. So mm, there was a judge call, and the issue is that I couldn't simply undo the draw and shuffle because I knew the last card because of Shell Dokai. So we proceed in a way that the library state was unaltered, let's say. So this is a bit of a break. Calling the judge here, waiting for them. Here, let's see, now I place the last three cards on, on the board to avoid the shuffling them. Shuffle again after undoing the draw and place them uh, on the bottom. And I get a warning for this because I misclicked basically. Uh, okay, and now we're gonna just win because we have everything we need for mana. Uh, Pardon shift for zero of the Tormo script and that's a that's oracle. So we're gonna play Pardon shift, crack Tormo script, as I said, exile the whole library, the whole the graveyard, sorry, and then the whole library, and play that oracle and win. Now this was game one. Interesting game is one of those matchup where you win with that sideboard interaction mostly. Uh, no, let's start with the uh, second round. Okay. Um, we are playing against a Stompy deck, a, a Soldier Stompy to be precise. And we keep a solid end with uh, Veil for Interaction, Brainstorm, Brain, uh, Veil of Summer, the Sorgol. So overall, uh, it's a good hand. Uh, I can keep this. I can see keeping this in the in the vacuum. But it starts with turn one Chalice of the Void. Now, as you can see, our combo does uh, play around Chalice of the Void, but our digging potential does not because we have like three dead cards in hand right now. So we uh, have to wait for uh, an in, you know an enabler that does bypass Chalice, or a way to solve this like through Oko or any other threat. We play Island past the turn. He play Cavern of Souls. I have no idea why he did not train his sphere here, to be honest. Oh, he decided to play Talia. Um, it, it makes sense. Uh, this does have some beating potential. Like the game was about to get difficult with this car because he taxes our mana, so we cannot cantrip, we cannot cast our spell for the regular cost. So it was a you know a hard one. I tried. I decided to play a Tass Oracle that does not get taxed by um, Thalia for the simple fact that he's a creature and he can block you want to chomp blocks and trade no, no sorry trade just block and kill the Thalia in any case so 
this is something you want to do, especially if you have the second fast article in hand. Um, I place a force of will on top of the circle and pass the turn. Uh, now they can actually play uh, three in sphere, but they did not for any reason. I I guess it didn't make any difference with Thalia down, since I could not cast uh, CMC one spells, and you know for the two mana spells, three in sphere and Thalia does basically the same thing. I don't know why it did not. In either way, but any case, in any case, okay, we drew paradigm shift here, but we have zero card in the graveyard, so we uh, we need to be sure that we can uh, have something. We resolve Shadow Island. We put Oko on the bottom of it and pass the turn. So I cast brainstorm. Uh, the chalice trigger, so I have something in the graveyard for any case. If it does if it does wasteland me, I pay one mana for Lotus Petal since party shift cost three with Talia. And I decided to not party shift here because I was basically dead to. Um, uh, I was I don't I remember what I was playing around. I remember that I thought I, I cannot shift here because if he finds some way to deny me I'm dead. I don't remember. Okay, that's played in sphere. You probably forgot that ancient tomb provides two mana. Provides two mana. So it's our turn. We just play Parent Shift for three. And pass the turn, we have no rush, we can play with zero card in hand if you have any way to remove our cards. You play a Lisbon Officer, um, draw two cards if I don't recall wrong, and then we on top, just draw the last card and play Thassa Oracle for three and win the first game. Now let's move on. As you can see, we do not suffer Charles too much for our combo. We just suffer it for our um, country ping and stuff like that. So let's move on to game two of the second round. Okay, we kept um, a solid end. He could have actually played uh, Suppression Free Turn 1. I have no idea why he didn't. Maybe he wanted to... Uh, maybe he wanted to play the Okori in either case. This card is pretty good alongside with Suppression Field. So he play Planes Go. I go for a Ponder. And find a Force of Will. Uh, as you can see, um, our enabler is here Thought Lash. So if you would have jammed um, Suppression Field, first of all, we could not have... Uh, Fetch. First issue. Second, uh, Thought Lash was not live anymore. He plays Suppression Field around dates for any, maybe he suspected we played dates. Um, I force that despite pitching the Thought Lash because I want to be free for fetching the second land. And I felt Uro was either way good in a matchup. So I play Shell Dock here, let the trigger resolve. Um, Cantrip. Put a brainstorm under it and pass the turn. And I think he's gonna jam Okori here. Yes, he does play Okori. Now this is a card is pretty good against us because we need a lot of mana to operate. But in this case, it's not really that great because we have Ancient Tomb, um, Uro, which also rams for an untapped land. So eh, not that great in this specific scenario. I fetch. I was thinking about playing Uro, but then I decided it was better to keep myself open for activating, uh, for casting uh, Pretty Theft or Bloodstone War or any case. So I'm gonna pass the turn. I fetch for no reason actually. Now I go B down and here I punt because I basically cast uh, the Bloodstone Borrower trying to block him that, forgetting that it actually does not. 
uh, block non-flyers. So basically I wanted to get rid of the Okori but I could not. And hence uh, I just took the damage and passed the turn. And because I wanna I wanna be uh, free to untap for the thought last year. By the way, he plays recruiter of the guard. He is forced to go for uh, some removal because we have a 3 1 beater and they have 14 lives. So it's basically a 5 turn clock. I say something less even because they have to tap the ancient tombs for 4 turn clock, something like that. So they actually draw get past jailer, if I don't record wrong. They think about it. I don't know if they have any 8 piece. I end up a single length of Okori. Um, play Sheldok Island. It triggers. Um, we put Oko under it. Oh no, sorry. The Oko was the first one. We put uh, Jace, Wilder of Mystery, under this and pass the turn. So it's going to be back and forth, some beat down. We are winning here because our race is better. Um, we jam an ancient tomb, on top of the Shadow Clan jam an ancient tomb and that for Thoughtlash. And we are winning again here the race because we're gonna, um, let's say, not take the damage from them. Uh, they play Spalth Jailer, if I don't, I don't remember wrong here. I, pre I take the damage. Let's say I activate Thoughtlash to not take the damage. And they play Spath Jailer. This is pretty strong in this situation because it gets the Monarch, but we are already on combo plan. So as you can see, having a double access of a fair and unfair plan helps because they are forced to recognize our threats. And this game was basically winning the race through Totlash and Brazilian Barrow to take a suboptimal piece, which is Palace Jailer against us. I could not force that because they have Cavern of Soul down, so... Yeah, uh, either way we are on a combo plan, so we're gonna just survive two turns. The exile pretty theft. I end up um, a sh an island, draw waterlog a groove, uh, play that and pass the turn. They draw two card, uh, one card, sorry. And the mark was already triggered. He beats for five, exile five cards. And then play officer here maybe? So here was a mistake. Um, so uh, if they had to, they had to jump the three inferior. They punted because I don't know if they knew, but basically when you cast off Shelter Karen, you have to pay extra taxes. So basically, I, I would have needed to one tap an ancient tomb and pass an extra turn and was another extra card for them. I had the force in hand. In any case, I could have forced that. Actually, I would have forced that. But probably the correct play from them was just to jump three sphere. They would have just take the force, but either way. So I end up. I uh, draw another Totlash, exile cards to activate Sheldok Isle. Ten cards. I activate Sheldok Isle. Reveal Jace, exile the rest. So exile my library and activate plus one of Jace and that's game. So let's move on to round three. Maybe a little bit fast here. They move to five, if I don't go wrong. Yeah. So um, a couple of words about the end. Here we have uh, a win condition that we can place under Shendo Kyla. So you see, even if Jace costs four mana, by playing along with Priest from Shendo Kyla, we're going to pay this two. So it's virtually like a Thassa Oracle. And Force of Will plus Peach, which can also be as you know an interaction spell by himself. So this is a pretty good end against combo, to be honest. And we were lucky to face. Uh, oops, all spells. So we go prismatic vista past the turn. They go past the turn again. We draw. Um, 
we play waterlog groove and pass because so basically i thought they would have gone in natural discard because they passed the turn i did not tap myself out to play brainstorm into shadow island because i thought there was again another beer animator going to try for natural discard or i don't know manless dredge maybe so at this point i try to cast a brainstorm and we find our enable which is part shift or thought lash in the case probably want to be lighter on this one and play uh, a pitch force of will of Thoughtlash, you no, know, pitch Thoughtlash of force of will, and enables Park Shift. But still, we have Spell Pierce up and force of will up, so in any case. Uh, Shadow Kyle triggers, we place Jace under it, pass the turn. So they try to play the um, uh, Agadim, the Underclip, untapped, taking 3 damage. Uh, Exile Elvish Spirit Guide, I think about that, I let it resolve. They play Lotus Pedal and play Balustrade Spy. I play a Force of Will. And they play a, for a Pact of Negation in response. I fetch and just Spell Pierce that. And so this is pretty much game because an untap uh, playing Thought Lash at this point because the graveyard is just too filled up. Pass the turn, they un end top, and we just combo out. We exile our library. Activate Shadow Cal. Let's not allow our library, let's say our cards until we have a Shadow Cal activation. We activate Shadow Kyle. Shadow Kyle. Um, we flip Jace, it results, and they concede. So let's move on. Uh, it was actually a good shot winning against uh, Upso Spell because um, that deck tends to win game one. To its raw power and consistency. So, uh, should be this one. Um, so, they decided Life Force to play around counter spells, which is pretty, pretty great actually, if you ask me, because I didn't think about that. But we also have other type of interaction like Thermos Grid, so it, it's not like too much to bear. Uh, we go uh, fetch pass. Now um, they basically play under seed informer. I force that, obviously. Pitching in flusterstorm, then uh, play pedal, land a pass turn. Um, they play pedal and under seed informer. Now there was a judge call here because they didn't pass priority on me. When they cast Lotus Pedal, so I wanna just be sure that everything was okay. Um, and I actually was thinking about counter this, countering this or not. But I wanted to call the judge because I, I already had a warning, so I want everything to be clear as much as possible. So it was a judge call. And we just agreed to rewind until the pedal wasn't stuck. I decided to let him resolve. And he sacrificed under city informer so he can mill the entire deck. He mills the whole deck. Narcomebo triggers. Wisely enough, they also decided not to claim for our Tormo script. Ah. Or maybe for Thought Lash. I don't know. So I let the Narcomebo triggers resolve. Um, if I was not coming for Cabal Therapy, actually Bridge would have triggered, but it didn't matter because they had zero card in hand, so uh, it's not really much important here. They only had a single Cabal Therapy. I asked for the target before the solution of the spell, obviously. I fetch, uh, play a bit of Summer, and draw the Parking Shift. He tried to dread return the Tassa Oracle, and I just uh, spell pierced it for the win. We will have combo pretty soon, actually, of this. But the zero card in answer was game. And this was round three. Now let's move on. Um, so, um, the fourth round was an intentional draw because um, we thought we were locked in. So let me check if this is uh, okay. Uh, we move on to round five, 
because I was 3-0-1 at this point, but our opponent, my opponent wanted to play, so we decided to agree to play. I was okay with that. Oh, that's that's actually G second game. My bad. Um, so this was the first one actually. Okay, there was a break here. All right. Um, we keep a, sol a solid hand of seven. We have a. Uh, Force of Will plus double pitch for any combo. I told you I was expecting a lot of combo in this tournament, so uh, these hands are pretty great. We have a Ponder, but I decided to keep myself open for a spell pierce if I was against the Chalice deck. Instead, uh, we get Karagas and go. I was uh, afraid I was playing against DNT, so I fetched for basic. Uh, cast Shell Dock it triggers and get Thassa Oracle down, as you can see. Um, you, you just you can just simply uh, set your Shadow Kyle trigger off a ponder. So draw what you want, put what you want under Sheldock, and just get the other stuff uh, on the bottom of your library. So now we have our own condition, we just need an enable which is Tolfash, and we have double country and, and also Uro, so we feel pretty good pretty good about this even against DNT. Instead, we see she arrive and discover we are playing against uh, Slivers. We play Crystal, Crystal Lion Slaver, Sliver. We play Uro. Uh, pass the turn. Unclaim it to And play this is basically a uh, and flying creature. So uh, Slivers does actually play Force of Will. So I decided to not counter this. I did not mind in any case and the uh, following turn we would have thought lush for prevent any damage so this was really not an issue in any case we play thought lush here it resolves and we're gonna just uh absorb a lot of damage it, it can resolve basically anything anything he wants as you can see this is nine damage and which means basically nine cards of our, our library library we, we will not never die from aggro now. So we draw our card, we uh, uh, play uh, Tassaka Oracle, we also have another Tassaka Oracle under the Sheldokai. Now, uh, you don't want to activate Thought Lash before your Tassaka Oracle resolves, because if you do, if they let you and then counter Tassaka Oracle, you're gonna die. So at this point, uh, let, let Tassaka Oracle resolve and exile with the trigger on the stack, and this is what basically happens. And yeah, yeah, I win. Moving on. We have the second game. Okay. Um, uh, our opponent mold. Uh, he has no interaction. But as turn one Aether Pile, which is pretty great. And Shroud Slivers and First Strike Slivers. This is not pretty much great, but it's just a bit of one, so I guess it's just to get the clock going, I think. Oh, but fast forward here. Yeah. So it goes Aether Pile and Pass. We end up, play land, pass the turn. Caracas into, uh, you know, the. Uh, Shroud Sliver. We play Brainstorm. Put stuff we don't need on top. Fetch and play Pithy Needle on Vial. So we can stop the clock going on. Just to slow them down. We, they did not have actually too much stuff going on, but you know. Just to prevent uh, Double Slyer down. So we play Uro, getting to 19 live. Just to grind. Here again, they play the uh, Palm Sliver. It gets forced. They have no Cavern of Souls. So we're taking things pretty much slowly. We have all the time we need. They only have four damage down. We need a land drop here, to be honest. We find the Ancient Tomb and cast Thought Lash. Again, they cannot pretty much do anything here because 
their deck, I don't think they can afford to play correct spells. So they mostly play you know, Force of Negation, Mind Break Trap, and Colorless Interaction. So they will not, I don't think they will feature their deck feature Disenchant. I did not think at least. So the B for 5, we take them, it's okay. Now we have a Ponder in our turn. Find a Soracle, pass the turn. We could have played a Soracle there, but it was no rush, to be honest. Um, I did not know if they had Force Plus Peach in hand, because they had two cards, so I decided to play the Soracle alongside with the Veil of Summer to be 100% sure I would have won. And this is basically what happened. Play the Soracle with Veil up, trigger, exile, and win the game. So we end up the Swiss on 401 with the intentional draw, and we move on to the top 8 matches. Um, so, so opponent moved to five. Um, our end is pretty great. Uh, the issue is, is that it does not combo on turn three because it has the Sheldo Kyle. So we cannot country point to one. To find another type of land and we also have to fill our graveyard with something which would be probably uh, the ponder so the shell kyle uh, place jace so again another a double win condition here if they counter one in any case we have the assassin end and uh, we have a lot of stuff going on here they play the it for dry arbor and pass the turn Okay, we have the enabler now. We don't mind playing Sheldon Kyle. So we can actually combo on turn 3 now. Uh, I thought I was against Maverick because we have Bayou into Dry Arbor into Zenith or else one of those. Of those. Uh, but he did not fetch Forest, so I have no idea why he was playing with Black now. So I, I was more leaning toward Absa Maverick. I place a ponder. I play a ponder, sorry. I could actually have just cast the uh, Parking Shift to be honest. We play Tropical Island, Lotus Pedal, and just Parking Shift. It does resolve. We swap gra Library and Graveyard, pass the turn. Now, in, in, this, in this position, we're gonna. Have two turns of win condition, the single Tass Oracle and the instant special Dokile for Jace, so we're in pretty good shape. Um, they play with what if and pass the turn. Maybe they want to uh, fake an abrupt decay, and that's what I thought actually. I was thinking about playing against Maverick also because it was a G, uh, you know, green white fetch. So I, 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 I put them on decay and so I decided to play around Decay, and this is done by doing this trick. I play Sheldon Kyle, and I exile the last card uh, in the Grigor and play the Sorgol to win. Now I decided thinking that I was facing Maverick, not Elves. Uh, the sideboarding would have been slightly different, I think, but not too much, I guess. Okay, should be this one. I go spend 11, I lost the Shepherd, and I realized I was facing Elves instead of Maverick. Um, my hand was pretty slow, so I decided to stop the Air Engine, which is Wildwood Symbiont uh, Visionary. I was about to name Quiron Ranger or Wildwood Symbiont. And it was a punt because the correct call was Alosaru Shepherd. I really underestimated the power that this card has also in this activated ability. And now soon they get it to do the, the thing. Okay, they play Black Or, uh, Gas Cradle, Quiro Ranger, one green floating, Heritage Druid, and pass the turn. Uh, Again, as you can see, they just land, they just play a land here, and we're in trouble because there's 20 damage. So the PD needle should have needed also a shepherd. I was afraid of uh, the Wedwood 
uh, drawing giant because the end was low but this was actually a punt i should have called the shepherd i didn't i didn't think about how cradle allows this uh, win condition so fast we play a brainstorm to find something uh, maybe a win condition we didn't find any so i fetch and play another ponder to find a win con i still didn't find anyone And now we just oh actually he huh he tapped dried arbor here to, to activate gas credo didn't notice that I guess he missed that too he, he could not have tapped this oh sorry never mind it, it's five uh, it's five of cradle okay no it's fine it's six mana total because it's five of cradle and one of pen eleven so it's twenty damage and I'm just dead Indeed, he didn't top that. Okay, and we lost the second game against elves, realizing that we were against elves. Now for the last game, should be this one. Click on fast forward. Now we have pretty good end. We have Will of Summer for their discard, Force plus Peach Brainstorm pedal to rush. I like this one. Play Tropical and pass the turn. They go Nettle Sentinel and pass. I brainstorm, um, put on top civil library because to me was a little bit too slow. Maybe it was a better card than Uro, maybe, but I thought that if I found in the later stages, Parking Shift as enabler, Uro was needed to combo off in rough spots. Uh, they play another Nethel Sentinel after beating us, we're okay with that, and Rider Arbor and pass the turn, we fetch. Um, Play Vista, play Petal, and just cast a Uro to green back some life and pass the turn. So I could have, uh, you know, Petal for Needle, but mm, there was no really rush to that. They thought sees us, we respond with Velo Summer, getting a 2 for 1. And they got beat down. They, they also punted here. Oh no, they did not punt it because the thought sees is not a green spell. Okay, my bad. We have a good brainstorm here. That allows us to put uh, one of the two Thass Oracle that we have off the brainstorm on top and to get uh, to get it under Shell Kyle. And this is what we do. And we just pass the turn. And they're about to combo. They play Zine for one. Um, I forced that because I was I, I knew that we were going for Shepherd and any interaction was basically dead at this point. They play Cradle. Top for four and play natural order, sacrificing Dread Arbor. Now in this scenario we have to find the force of will of a single brainstorm. We managed to found that also with the pitch, so we force uh, pitching Tass Oracle because we already have one under Sheldok Island. We play Ur of the Graveyard, get the trigger, draw a card, place an island, and cast Ponder. Did we actually draw? Oh, I think we forget to draw a card. Hmm. That's sad. Well, anyway, we draw a Shift of it. We untap draw. No, as you can see, uh, they did not combo in the turn before, they did not have enough mana to cast Cradle of Behemoth, and Glimpse was dead. Um, we play Pern Shift of 5 cards, but despite that, we have um, 3 Devotion total with considering Uro, a lot of country in the graveyards. Uh, it was, I think, only one land, maybe in one pedal, and everything else was country. So with all the mana we have on our uh, board, on our board, we can just cantrip into cantrip into cantrip to win the turn, uh, the following turn, unless we draw the land. Like we also have the draw of Uro, so we had to go really unlucky and simply draw land into pedal to not win the following turn. Uh, we attack also with Uro, draw a card. Now drawing the brainstorm, I decided to uh, combo that turn because uh, 
when a party is shifting main one, I said if I draw um, a pedal on the or on another land, I cannot combo this turn. I have to wait. But off the Uro, I get to draw another brainstorm, which is a perfect card. So we're gonna cast the brainstorm. We draw uh, three cards and put two on top. I cast a pedal. Cast another brainstorm. Do the same trick again. I think about it a little bit. I keep the ponder, I cast the ponder, play Lotus Pedal, draw Lotus Pedal, play Lotus Pedal. Now, why I did not simply just activate Shadow Kyle here? Because he had two cards in hand and I was playing around DK. So, as you can see, we managed to get a single card in our library, and even if he had, uh, I don't know, any form of removal, a DK, a push, we just win in any case because we have the Devotion Trigger getting uh, one count of Uro. Indeed, we win now. This was the first top eight round. And we move on into top four. Uh, so we mold and we play into one relic, which, oh, sorry, not to one, one ponder. Now, I was giving in a Tundra Ponder, it was on Osnoko, on Snow Miracles, I play Relic. Our relic is pretty great against, um, you know, Bant decks because they play Uro, and this stacks them Uro, and also allows us to combo quicker. We play Brainstorm, as you can see, we were not against uh, a Snow deck, we were against a Snow Show and Tell, a, show, a Snow and Tell, let's say which is basically a half uh, mid-range, half combo deck, much like us, to be honest. It's pretty similar strategy, but we don't get to play Shrentel, we play another, another thing. I tried to brainstorm, I did not find any win condition. So keep digging, didn't find any win condition again. They play a brainstorm. This goes back and forth for some turns, country into country, astrolay ponders. Stuff like that. Uh, their end is pretty gross because they have Force of Will plus Pitch plus Pain. We only have Veil in our hand, we don't have Force of Will plus Pitch. We decide to play Euro, throw another parking shift. And now, this is a card that really is a pain in the ass because it also stops Sheldon Kyle activation and most of our interaction. Uh, for any reason, he decided to bounce Relic of Progenitus instead of Astrolabe to draw two cards. I think he punted here. Uh, maybe he was faking a removal with the open land, or he wanted to keep himself open for Veil, which is probably correct. Even though I don't think you need Veil with the Fairy Down and Forcing End in any case, so whatever. I play a relic, pass the turn. Maybe should just jump to Thash to be honest. Um He goes into another discard and ups the ferry. I play pedal and uh, uh you know escape Uro, draw a card, he plays Koatla, a double Koatla in the end of turn. Ups the ferry again. And tap and pass. Uh, we are a pretty rough spot. They have double force plus double peach and a veil of summoning, and we're not gonna win this, probably. So I try to cast a veil of summer because I was trying to jamming Goku, still thinking that we were against Snoko, not show and tell. Uh, he forced this, I think, because it was scared we would have combo. Uh, I crack railing in response. To draw a card, draw Force of Will and play Oko, even if this card is dead right now. Attack first, cast Sheldok Island, put Jace under it, and cast Oko to produce a food. He end of turns of the ferry, uh, cast Show and Tell, and I was like, oh, I think I'm dead at this point. Uh, he flips Emrakul, I have Oko down, and he's probably gonna attack that.
is reading Thoughtlash probably. Uh, so, okay, what happened here? He decided to bounce Thoughtlash with Teferi, which is not a great idea since I can just exactly respond prevent the damage for Emrakul. Uh, maybe he just wanted me to have less permanent to make the annihilator trigger worse, but despite that, this was actually bad because he put our counter spells live. So I exile my library except two cards if I don't record wrong in response. He beats me. I prevent the damage but I have to suck six permanents. So this is where we are a shell dock island, uh, a tropical island, and one card in hand. Now this is a situation where shell dock isle was actively bad because we had uh, two cards to draw a petal of a land to win. Uh, in this case we have Jace plus uh, force, simply as that. And it's not enough because we try to cast Jace, it gets countered. But our force is live since we don't have any more Teferi down. But despite that, he has a Veil of Summer and we don't have the mana to cast a spell pierce because we drew Shell Dokile. This game was pretty much lost anyway, but was pretty close because if this was any other land, uh, non fetch land, let's say, we would have just cast the spell pierce into the wind. So. Pretty close, pretty unlucky. Sometimes you get through, sometimes you don't. Um, now we are good to we go to uh, the second game. It was top four against Snow and Tell. Uh, okay, um, hold up. This is our keep. Um, we have Flusterstorm. We have double Flusterstorm actually. They still have uh, uh, Teferi, which is pretty great. They have Grizzlebrand, and they decided in shifting Ceratops, I guess, to play around. Uh, you know, Uros and Oko probably, I think. So we play land into Ponder. We get a brainstorm past the turn. They fetch and play Carpet of Flowers, which is great, which is pretty great, let's say, and they Ponder of it. Uh, I don't know why they accidentally revealed that. So we cast another brainstorm. Uh, we put Flusterstorm on top and Delta on top, we still have enough lands. Maybe I should put Snow Covered on top, to be honest. The forest is not that great. They play Ponder. Play Fetch and pass the turn. I fetch in the end of turn. Now, um, we have our enabler, we have our interaction, a double interaction. So, as you can see, we have a way to exile the um, the library and still uh, double win condition, force plus pitch, flaster zone. So, if we if we dissolve parting shift, we still have plenty of ways to win because we have Tassa, counter, Tassa, counter. So, you yeah, cast parting shift, uh, let it resolve. Place four cards on top and pass the turn. He plays Teferi with uh, with the Carpet of Flowers mana. Uh, he didn't force this, I think. Yeah. I forced that. I forced the Teferi to have Flust on Live and they play Show and Tell. I Flust on that and they cannot force that. And they play a Ponder, they find Astrolabe, that they cannot cast actually, pass the turn. So we have two cards uh, in the library now and we can to proceed to start to go for the win. We play Stassa and gets countered, they untap, play, draw another Carpet of Flower which is basically useless at this point. Uh, beat down the shifting ceratops. We play and the second tassaracle and we just win the game. As you can see, it's not covered was at in this point because we could have played around removal by casting ponder. But we win game two with a lot of uh, redundancy and interaction spell.
Flasterson was actually pretty great in counter the uh, Grizzlebrand. Now this is the last game because the final was not dispute, disputed. So okay, uh, we have carpet of flowers uh, now. We, we mold to six. We have four mana for Thoughtlash, a double interaction, carpet of flowers. Uh, I feel pretty good about this. They have double country and force in hand plus lands. They ponder, find the impulse and pass the turn. Um, we have also the win condition now. Play tropical island and play carpet. Pretty great. Uh, even if they won't play any more uh, island, this still ramps for one inch turn, so it's, it's pretty great in any case. We draw a brainstorm, which is great with our shell dock isle. We also have Jace. I decided to put the Jace on top, which, which basically means that you can play it for a cheaper cost of a shell dock isle. Ancient Tomb. And. Uh, Plays Jace of Sheldok Isle, keep myself open for Spell Pierce or Flusterstorm and pass the turn. You go for Impulse, end of turn, get Teferi, and tap the rose. Try to jump Teferi. I Spell Pierce that. He didn't force back uh, because he would have basically left him with any interaction. And if I had to jump uh, a combo in my next turn, I would have just won on the spot. So it, it made sense for them to not um, force them. I add blue. I play a parent shift with two mana. I did not fetch because I want to have only three cards and not four, so I can win the following turn. Despite having double fluster storm, um, I felt that uh, being against another combo deck, uh, it was more important to be faster. They actually have to play the double flash system in our end, so I did not fetch for this reason. It means that we still down this mana, but we have carpet of flowers to compensate for that, so it's okay. So he plays Lavinia. Uh, so our shell dock is actually dead now because we cannot play Jace, and we we don't we lost let's say half of our uh, redundancy. From that point of view, because we have a single one a win condition and not two win condition uh, for to fight their counter spell, thanks to Lavinia. But we still have mana of um, carpet of flowers to play around uh, force of will. We also have a spell piece, so it's pretty okay. We place a Sauracle, he forces it back. We have one mana floating from carpet of flowers. And we flash the storm and win the game against Snow and Tell. And that's it. So uh, the final was not played because it was one in the night for me. So it was kind of late. We decided to split. I was still first in the leaderboard because I did not lose any round. I ended up with a 602 record overall. The deck felt great. It has a lot of redundancy, a lot of interaction. And again, this is my list. I will link, if this is get posted on YouTube, the primer in the description, which also has the link for Discord if you guys want to join to see more of this uh, content. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.